First things first, everybody, um, want to start off letting you know that we are adding a brand new podcast to the Rosemary podcast feed starting this Tuesday. It's called Say Hello to Fun Time, and it's hosted by Logan Pattonaud and Adam Corson, where they are, they're they're going to talk about some albums they love and interview new and upcoming artists, starting with the newly formed country duo Phil and Tucker. You may have heard their song 2020 Vision that was released yesterday on the Rosemary website. Um, so yeah, that podcast will be up, um, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. We're finishing editing and everything today. The morning brew will go up Monday and then, um, to, uh, the say hello to fun time will be up the, the following day on Tuesday morning. So, so get, get excited for that. We're, I've got some other stuff I'm cooking up too. So we're going to keep adding new podcasts and new things to the, to the Rosemary feed, to make sure we're doing multiple things per week. So it's, you don't have to go any extended time without, without anything new. So, but back to our show, Casey. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 47 of The Morning Brew with Corey and Casey. We are recording this podcast live bright and early over at twitch.tv slash rsmrymedia. And today is Sunday, April 19th, which is National Garlic Day. Casey, what are your National thoughts on garlic? garlic? Day. On, or as garlic? Emerald's called garlic, right? Oh, garlic. <laughs> what are your thoughts? You a fan? You not a fan? You like that garlic? I like garlic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your what's your favorite like thing to garlic. spring to put some garlic on? Um, you know, I like it on some pizza. I like it on everything, man. It's pretty yeah. good. I like it on ice cream most of all. So wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you almost missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's, it's, it's like when you have the notes in front of you, you you know the points you gotta hit. And like you you say something, and I'm like, that's a good response. Let's move on. And, wait, hold on. <laughs> It's it's the it's the conscious versus the subconscious constantly when you're podcasting, constantly. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, it, I, I, it's not good on pizza. I have this one memory of like my like one of my first run-ins with garlic is my cousin put so much on a pizza and one of my birthdays that one of my friends got so sick, <laughs> allergic or just like too just much like, is too much. Just too much was too much, and he got a <laughs> had a stomach ache, and we were all just being like. Dude, you just couldn't handle the fucking garlic. You just didn't have to get over yourself. Now you the th- baby. The the thing of the thing about garlic is like I like it within things. I like like you know sprinkled garlic on top of something. But full blown ass garlic cloves. Like my wife buys these olives that have that have garlic cloves just stuck inside of them. Like you put the pits out of the olive and put a gar- piece of garlic inside of it, and she just eats them shits. And I don't I don't understand it. Like could you eat just like a clove of garlic? Couldn't eat a fucking olive, so <laughs> that was the next question. Was uh, what's your fucking what's your take olives on olives? Are fucking garbage, disgusting, dude. too salty. I olives to, are terrible. I swear to God, it's just someone p- picked a, the first olive out of the garbage and ate it. And it's just like, mm, this is great. I think I swear to God, olives originated in the bottom of like, a garbage. Yeah, can. the same way like maggots like just just permeate exactly. from garbage. Like that's where garlic comes from. Yeah, no, that's where both <laughs> olives and garlic come from. Yeah, no, what, no, what no, maybe not garlic. Yeah, but olives were definitely like someone found them in the bottom of a garbage can. And they're like, mm, these are good. Then I'm not sure how we work on this. So if you if you ever watch How I Met Your Mother, Casey, there's there's the olive theory, right? There's the olive theory that's like P two people go together if one person likes olives and one person doesn't. Um, I don't I don't see how how this podcast works if if we both are olive haters. <laughs> Wait, yeah. no, I do see how this works because by the end of the episode, you find out that Marshall and Lily both like olives. Is that one, is that really the thing? Yeah, the and one of them's been pretending the entire time, and they're perfect together, and they both like olives. So I think they actually, oh, okay. it's the opposite, or it's just that any of those kind of, or uh, it's just that the olive olive theory is just bullshit. M- m- most li- much like much like any of those theories of just like <laughs> yeah. if a Scorpio and a Gemini like they're meant to be together. Like you know what I hate yeah. astrology. Like horoscopes, yeah. like uh, yeah. all that, all that stuff can piss right off. Like someone that yeah. thinks it like sense. just because yeah. they were born in a certain month, it means that they are all the same way. Like no, me and a serial killer can be born on the same exact day, but it doesn't mean our personalities are the same. Yeah, just because just because you might might share similar personality yeah. traits doesn't mean you're gonna fucking both <laughs> murder somebody. It's like if I find out I was born on the same day as a serial killer, I'm gonna be like, well, I guess. I might as well just follow my calling then. I think it's gonna it's it's gonna envelop me one one day, right? Or like or like Jesus. overarching like overarching personality traits doesn't like uh, I, I don't know doesn't uh, um 
decide who you are as a yeah, fucking yeah. person you know like <laughs> even if even if they are like have any validity to it like it doesn't mm -hmm. really decide if, you as a fucking person if anybody out there is is like a full-blown uh, you know they they read their uh, horoscope I'm just, fuck, I'm just gonna be a fucking asshole today because i'm a fucking aquarius <laughs> might as well be yeah that's the it's the way i was born it's, it's the way i need to be <laughs> <laughs> um, if you if you if you're full blown read your horoscope every morning and follow that stuff, um, I want you to write into us on, on Insta like follow it. us on Instagram and and, uh, and let me know why you feel that way. Let, let me let me know what 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 that does for you. And uh, on, on the on the, uh, on the topic of psychopaths, if you like olives, <laughs> you might be a psychopath. Yeah yeah yeah. You if you like insane. olives, you must be a Scorpio. <laughs> you might be insane. <laughs> That's the astrology I go by. So speaking like, of... If you <laughs> like food, some foods, I think you might be crazy. Speaking of garlic then, what's the whole vampire garlic thing? Why do vampires hate garlic? What's what's the what's the connection there? I suppose rather than asking you, I could have Googled it and put that in the notes as like a learning lesson for everybody, but I didn't. I just don't I just don't <laughs> think white people like spices, you know? Like, <laughs> they, don't like, they don't like things on their food. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You put curry yeah. in front of a white person, they're like, get that out yeah. of here. <laughs> so he's like the palest white person. They're like, get any, get all those fucking shit out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I the whiter like you are, you the more you hate anything that's not just uh like a like a chicken nugget and a hamburger. Just yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> if there's anything is is fucking plain as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have, um excuse me? Do you have any bananas? <laughs> I could really go for a banana. <laughs> um. So when I when I worked at Fye, I had a district manager, and uh we. Obviously, I had a district manager. Um, we, <laughs> we, we, Jesus, we, I don't know why I didn't catch that. Again, it's the conscious versus the subconscious when you're podcasting. Um, so we had we had to do these Twilight release when the new Twilight DVDs were coming out on DVD and Blu-ray. Um, after being in theaters, we had to do launch parties where at we'd stay at work until midnight, and at midnight people would line up outside to buy a DVD of a movie <laughs> that they already saw in theaters a couple months before that, but they waited up until midnight so they could watch it again at their home. But anyways, our district manager came to one of these events that we had to do, and like he's just this old like balding gray hair guy like he 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 walks inside and he's got he's got garlic strapped to his neck because he thought he was hilarious because like this movie has vampires in it so he came in with <laughs> garlic on himself yeah it was it was soon after that that i realized i need to get out of this fucking place <laughs> soon after that like i realized like when i look at when i look at the times now i'm just like oh we weren't all that lost we weren't all that <laughs> like we were going down the same path we've always been going down okay okay <laughs> <clears throat> um we have ashley in the chat she says hey hi casey i was gonna say i was i was about to say i was hey and uh and and <laughs> there's two of us here you better say hi to both of us it, it says hey guys it's plural okay okay it's, okay. it's pertaining I, to I, the two if, of us i thought it only said just my name and <laughs> just my anxiety my anxiety over the whole ordeal just you know <laughs> um so what's up casey Hello, how was Hello, your there. how was your how was your last week or so how was your easter we, we didn't have a podcast <laughs> don't last ask week me about my fucking last week <laughs> <laughs> don't even off do off it. off the air casey and i discussed off, his previous off record week. uh so last, and it, it was it was a it was a roller bad. coaster <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't bad <laughs> I can't really I can't really do a lot of complaining, you know. I'm still healthy. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was how was your Easter though? Did you uh you fucking pound down on some ham or what? No, nah, I didn't really do anything. Nobody did. Easter was canceled this nah. year. Jesus yeah. didn't rise, the bunny didn't see his shadow, whatever the hell happens on Easter. It Think didn't life happen this is year. canceled this year. Yeah, no twenty twenty as a whole is canceled. That doesn't it doesn't exist. I don't. I think years for me are just canceled anyway. So like, I need to, you guys pay attention to that stuff. I'm 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 in my own little. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I pay attention to that stuff because I'm I'm of the mindset that I always need something to look forward to. It's what you know. It's what keeps me positive. What keeps me what waiting and for like excited about the next week to come and excited about you know the 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 future. I, I always like things to look forward to. But when everything's canceled and there is nothing to look forward to. I don't know. Maybe maybe the pessimism starting to starting to come out of me. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you just hang out, hang out with me a little too much, so the pessimism will just come out. I'd like really. to think we balance each other out. Maybe I'm too positive and too much of an apologist for certain things because I want to see the best in everything. And if you're on the negative side, then like we 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 balance each other out in a way that like you you knock me down and I lift you up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think that's a that's that's a reasonable a reasonable assumption to make or uh, not assumption, but a. Uh, um evaluation to yeah. make yeah. yeah um yeah. <clears throat> uh my my easter i pretty much just uh my wife and i we made uh homemade cinnamon rolls uh we did like a whole little brunch thing mixed some garland city ipa with some orange juice made a little beer mosa uh and then i played uh video games all day pretty much we didn't we didn't do a dinner we just kind of we put together you know some cheeses some 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 meats some fruits and stuff and made a charcuterie which on easter i called it a charcuterie easter because uh because that's just the kind of clever son of a bitch that I am. <laughs> the kind of person you are. <laughs> and aside from that, like the last week or so, we've just been cleaning. Uh, I cleaned my cleaned my shed out, cleaned the basement. We took like two car loads to the dump, um, and it was it was good. You know, I felt good about I, it. I just had this this fucking I had this fucking. <laughs> Oh, I just had this picture in my brain of like you just keep calling it a charcuterie Easter and like Megan can't stand it and like and like like the fourteenth time in she just stands up and takes a fucking platter and, and tosses yeah, it across yeah. and, the room. And, and the reason like, I can't stand it anymore. And the reason I keep saying it over and over again is because I didn't get a rise out of her and no reaction at all every time other time I said it. And I was waiting for like the recognition that just like, oh, that's funny and like clever. Like a, what what a nice what a nice thing that you made up. But I wasn't getting anything, so I was just like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it was really fun doing that charcuterie Easter that we did earlier, right? And then nothing. Crickets. And, and and that's why she just finally couldn't. Like clearly she heard me, but she just wasn't reacting. But I needed I needed the confirmation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> fucking uh, fucking cu cutting board flies out of the flies out of the window just, celery everywhere <laughs> my cat's lapping up carrot sticks from the floor she's like she's just like that's it she just tosses it and just marches into the bedroom and that's like what you see her in the next day and you're like everything good you're like yeah yeah that's fine that's fine everything's good everything's good <laughs> Yeah, once once Easter's over with, it's just next next Easter though when it comes around, like she, yeah, she's being on her toes, again. making sure that I don't. Do so uh, what do you what do you want to do for uh, dinner tonight? I was thinking maybe uh... <laughs> just don't say it, don't she, motherfucking like, shakes say her it. Head. She like shakes, she's like shaking her head at you with like the fucking <laughs> scowling eyes. I, I imagine like an apron on, holding a spatula, like don't you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've been cleaning a lot in the last week or so, and I realized that, like, I really like cleaning because I love the feeling of, like, when I'm done with it and things are clean and nice and, and, nice and neat and stuff. And then I was, uh, reminded me of New Girl. You know, Schmidt, he loves cleaning. He had to do the dishes all the time. Had to keep, a, had to keep, you know, clean, clean room, clean, clean loft. And uh, you've mentioned before that you are like a Nick Miller, and then I feel like I'm like a Schmidt, and I was trying to think to myself, who is our Winston? Who would be our Winston? Until I also realized we are both half Winston. So ha Winston, oh, yeah, is, I Winston. Think every, I think I think that's like what makes Winston like one of the best characters because everyone we're has all a little Winston. Winston. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone has a little Winston in them. <clears throat> well, you know his his yeah, love because, his, because his love for cats, that, his innocence. You know, I just feel like that's what makes that sh that show fucking great is the fact that like if there was two characters, you're a fucking Schmidt and I'm a fucking Nick Miller for sure. <laughs> And then together never... we are Winston, so we round out the entire male group. That we, what, what we aren't is a coach. Neither of us are sporty enough no. or well enough no. at sports to be a coach. So maybe we no. need we need to find a coach. Does Woodard want to be our coach? I think Woodard is the coach. <laughs> Woodard is coach. Okay. <laughs> Woodard's coach. Woodard's coach. I think I... We are both half Winston. <coughs> Weird. Ooh, I just I just snotted up into my nose, and I I thought I ooh, ooh. don't do okay. That was weird. That was a weird one. <clears throat> Anyways, Casey, those uh, the stimulus checks are looking like they're starting to roll out too. You got any big plans for when you get yours? Um, just gonna buy a a whole lot of bags of grapes. Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> uh, make it yeah. the the cotton candy ones. Yeah, just uh, I'm just gonna hold on to uh, just bags and bags of grapes. I mean, that's what they want you to just make sure it's like a, a local company. You know what I mean? Make sure yeah, it's a, yeah, a yeah, local yeah. a local winery or something. Maybe they got some grapes they're not using because of all this. Uh, their their wine yeah. sales are down. 
Man, that's that's that was that was my uh, my intention. I was gonna start my own winery. With oh, all the what are you gonna it. call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you gonna call it Casey's Winery, but with an H? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think that that fucking fits, bud. <laughs> that fucking fits. It needs to have it. We need. There needs to be some. Uh, what's the, what's the word that starts with an A? Alliteration, though. It needs to be something winery that starts with a W, also. What do you mean? Like a, Casey's, like, Casey's uh, Winery. Oh, Walt, Walt's Winery. Uh, I don't know about that. Alliteration, dude. You gotta have the WW. It's gonna uh, look good as a logo too. You can make it like a rip off of the WWE logo with just the W on top of the W. People are gonna find you by Ash. mistake and think they're looking at some. And every every wine is named after a wrestler. So then everyone would just be named fucking. <laughs> <laughs> What's his fuck? I forgot his name. It's Chris Benoit, Chris dude. Benoit. It's Chris Benoit. It's Chris Benoit. It's Chris Benoit. <laughs> all I could think of, all I could think about, was him murdering his family. I yeah, I mean that's, his name. that's the only that's the only thing that comes to mind when anybody thinks it's of that one, man these days. Unfortunately, it's it is because he was one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, and he'll never be known for that ever again. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, it's unfortunate. But Walt's Winery well, coming soon. Once <laughs> once these stimulus checks call for cards start rolling out, I mean, mind you, twelve hundred dollars isn't going to start you a wine. You, you, you'll be able to survive I'm, maybe like. Two weeks as a winery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. I'm just gonna buy a bunch of bags of grapes from just just random stores and just hold on to them. Yeah, and mind you, like and you're not gonna to, know anything. To about, you're not gonna know anything. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna know anything. I'm just, ab- gonna, I'm just hold on to the hold on to the grapes till they go really bad. <laughs> and then at That's that all. point, you're just gonna like I don't know what you watched a couple videos on YouTube, so you're just gonna like step on them maybe a few times and then just like <laughs> m- shove them into a bottle and call it wine. No, no, <laughs> it's really gonna be more tw- of like is, a jam. This is 2020, dude. I don't use YouTube vids. I use my fucking big brain. Oh, okay? okay, that's right. I'm American and is I that, got a big brain. Is that what 2020 is? We're we're not, we're not using YouTube anymore. We're just using. Yeah, we're done. We're done using. We're done doing any sort of research. Okay, it's just it's just our big brains. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Mm-hmm. We're done doing research. We're done reading. We're done doing any sort of information gathering. We use our big brains up here. <laughs> Find it up. Well, well, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> um, music, Casey. What did you What did you listen to these last couple of weeks? Um. Other than other than like the oldest fucking music I've been like uh, just like given to to listen to because. We're not gonna go down that route. But <laughs> because um, life is strange. <laughs> life is the strangest fucking shit. <laughs> you remember how I said I had listened to fucking Spill Canvas in fucking twelve years? Oh yeah, one fell swoop. Night. It was clear to me, Casey. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Um, I listened to that new Bonnie Ver song, which was fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. It was very good. It was very good. Um, it was. Just you know, not enough. I need, yeah. I need fucking, I need more. Well, did um, you notice the uh, like what the album cover has on it? Yeah, it's like season five, episode, episode one, one, which pilot. makes sense. So he's got four albums out, right? So if those, yeah, if, he, so if season Indio five is, would be his fifth, right? Yeah. You remember how like in that one video before the last album came out, he referred to the albums as seasons, like the summer one, the winter one, the fall one, the spring one. Like if yeah. this is season five, episode one, then I assume it's like the first song of a series of songs he's gonna release for the next album. Yeah, because it's called Pilot too. So. Exactly. I'm excited. I'm really excited. But I listened to that. I listened to Sadistic released a new uh, a new EP, which is really good. It's called Delirium, which mm-hmm. is really good. Um, Aesop Rock released uh, songs for like a video game called Freedom Finger, which they were fucking amazing. Um, he hasn't released music in a bit. <clears throat> well, he did with the tobacco, but other, since then, um, Freedom Finger sounds rather sexual. It's just, it's honestly, it's <laughs> literally a, a flying spaceship with a middle finger. Is like oh, a okay, like yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, it's it kid like, rock shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They went the other way with it though. They, they got, yeah. got Aesop Rock. They, they could have got. 
<laughs> Miss Opportunity. Has anybody mixed yeah. like uh, like sampled that song for like uh, a beat or anything? No, because they don't want to be fucking ostracized <laughs> as a fucking idiot. <laughs> no, I mean like Eminem, <laughs> dude. It's, it's, that's, that's, is a fucking that's not moron. above Eminem at this point. <laughs> it's above Eminem, dude. It's it's above Eminem. Okay, Eminem looks at that and he goes, "I'd rather fucking not." <laughs> or below him, I above him, can't. below him. Yeah, that's why. See, I just had to do that, and literally it took everything out of the fucking room. <laughs> Here's the deal, though. We we have willed things into existence on this podcast before. Stay tuned, guys. Stay yeah, tuned. If I, w- if I will into existence, honestly, you know, I don't think it, you're right. It's not Because remember, we talked about fucking... when you don't want something, and I, and I do want something to happen, that's when it happens. This is, this is a it's prime not, example. It's not past... It's not beyond fucking Eminem to release a fucking Kid Rock fucking bass <laughs> beat and then have Kid Rock on it, maybe. I don't fucking know. Hell yeah, dude. It's going to happen. Yeah, <clears throat> fuck yeah. Um, I listened to the new... Per- uh... Then they perform at the fucking White House. <laughs> on the lawn, though, with no with no um, sort of um, audience, because we can't have that right now. Yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. It'd be a, not that it, anyone it, would really it, want to show up for that anyway. <laughs> it'd be the fucking be the equivalent of watching fucking fucking Marshall Mathers play "Lose Yourself" eight years <laughs> after he fucking won the fucking. <laughs> um, I listened to the new Strokes album, the new Abnormal, and honestly, like it's so good. Which it, you know, I, I I like Pitchfork, the website. I I go to their, I read their reviews all the time. But the guy that reviewed this album, I think he's got a grudge against these boys because he gave it a pretty low score. I think it was like a five point seven or something. And like every other website I've read, and every and all of everyone that I know that has listened to it, myself, my wife, we all love it. Like this album is super super good. Um, it feels really like really really cohesive. Um, they use synth on the album that they didn't really do in the past. Uh, well, I guess they had a little bit, but not, not, not to this extent. Um, it's only nine tracks, but it's 45 minutes long. So like each song carries on for four or five minutes. Um, the last song in the album kind of dials back into a melody that was, uh, the chorus of a song, um, earlier on in the album. So like, it really feels, you know, it, it feels whole in that sense. And there's not really a single, a single dud on the entire thing. So I'm, I really, I really, really, really enjoy it. Um, have you ever been a fan of The Strokes? Um, yes, yes, I have. And I actually, a buddy of mine was, uh, had told me recently that like he had, he was just like, I had never listened to The Strokes before, but this uh, album's awesome. And I was just like, well, one, listen to the fucking old Strokes. Yeah, is this it? It's one of the best albums ever. And two... This is one of the best albums ever. Uh, is this it? Uh, is this it? Oh, I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. their yeah, album is yeah, this yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that is. I was, I was about yeah, to say. Yeah, no, this will be like one mind. of my favorites of the year. But of all time, like, get the fuck out of here. I was, I was about to end the podcast and fucking come up to your place and fucking slap you a couple of times. <laughs> you can't do that, Casey. You have to be socially distant. Is this is this is it? Is the one that has like eleven twenty three on there? The songs called. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I haven't listened to that fuck those songs in so long, so. Mm-hmm. Um other than that, I I checked out the new Hamilton Lighthouser album too. I I still haven't gotten through the entire thing. I like it. He's a really good singer-songwriter. It's like a little bit indie, a little bit folk. Um some songs sound very Beach Boysy, Beatlesy. But as a whole, like I'm not sure I dig it as much as I did the last one because Rostam, who used to be in Vampire Weekend, produced the entire album last year and, and wrote a lot of the songs with him or on the last one that he released and i like that style a lot more than this one but i'll finish it one of these days and maybe it'll it'll grow on me but i like it right now but i don't love it um also a new album announcement um that that happened this week from an artist that i hadn't heard of before um naeem is is, is his name he was formerly known as spank rock he signed to the People label that Justin Vernon started. Um, his new album called Startisha comes out on June 12th. Um, and if you remember, Casey, on the last Bon Iver album, there was a song called Naeem. And that's that was named after this guy because Justin loved his shit so much. Um, oh, okay, okay. But there's a, new, there's a new song out. It features Justin Vernon and Swamp Dog. And it's called Simulation. And it's really, really good. And I'm super excited for this album now. Also nine tracks. The same way that uh, 4 Emma was when that was released. So check out Naeem. N A E E M is how you spell it. Why do you gotta throw on me? Throw on me that four M O is only nine tracks. It's like it's kind of fucks around my whole my whole theory <laughs> of like short albums being fucking bullshit. 
<laughs> so what, what so is does track does the amount of tracks matter to you or is it more so um it's length more so of the album? Length, I think. So like, like for example, I, this I, I strokes don't find album. Myself, like it's I just nine don't find tracks. Myself able, to, able to like really like dive deep into a nine track album unless those tracks have like right. changes in depth, you know? Like Like the Strokes album being forty five minutes long, but nine tracks is totally fine. I, it depends. Yeah, it, but it depends on how they do it. Like, uh, like, um, like Boney Vare's fucking. I Boney Vare's a good example. Like, there's a lot. There's some. Tra- there's some albums out there that are like eight, nine tracks long. That like you know they change throughout the songs, and the songs just don't have like the same structure throughout the entire thing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Right. Like, it, like it's not a, it's not a five a five minute song of just like verse chorus verse chorus verse yeah, chorus yeah. bridge chorus you know like which I don't think the, the 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 Strokes album probably isn't that but oh yeah yeah no it isn't there's there's weird little interludes and they they they, they change direction a lot and it's it's very satisfying but, listen but a lot of the fucking a lot of these uh, albums coming out are just are just eight track bullshit albums yeah and again we i think we've talked about this before i think on this podcast but it's more of like in the day in the age of streaming and not selling a full album in stores it's like you release an eight track album that's short people are going to listen to the songs quicker and people are going to listen to them multiple times and the more times they listen to those tracks the more money it generates you listen listen i'm not normal people okay i have the attention span to listen to your entire fucking album exactly. all the way through and that's what I want. I don't want you to release one half year album and then release a, like a super short album. Mm-hmm. I want a long album. We all do. Well, not we all, but me and you do at least. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, of Pitchfork, though. And then I get a long album and I'm like, this shit is fucking. <laughs> I can't, can't even get through it. <laughs> um, speaking of Pitchfork, it though. Been nine fucking tracks. Casey, <laughs> Pitchfork gave out their first 10 out of 10 since I believe. Kanye West, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. It's been it's been a decade since they did it, and they did gave it to the new Fiona Apple album. New Fiona Apple album. Yeah, huh? she she's back. She has a new album out. It's very. I, I don't know if it's my shit. It's very very interesting. Like the, a lot of the sounds that she uses are like sounds that she makes around her around her apartment. Like she says, she's like smacking spoons against this and banging against the wall to create percussion. And like her, the way she sings and the melodies she creates are very like, it's almost like she's like doing poetry, uh, just speaking, rapping, singing. It's, it's just this weird blend. And like, that's pretty much what the whole review talks about is like, this is unlike any album you've heard before. Like it's very unique in that sense. And I guess that's what gave, made them give it such a high score. But like, I'm listening to it and I just don't know what to think of it. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I hate it. I don't know if I absolutely love it. I, I don't know yet. Maybe I'll know one day, but right now I don't know what to tell you about it. I'm interested in what you think of it. So check it out if you're ever super bored. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out. She has like, I think like the only thing I know Fiona Apple for is having that album that has like the longest running title ever. Mm. I'm not. I'm not. I don't, I don't follow her too much, so I don't know what you mean. She has like one, an album that's like the title is. It's long. Mm. It's long. I, I think that's who she. That that's that's who the, the who I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. It's like a long ass running title. That's I. I remember hearing it back in the day because someone was gonna make a title that title that was even longer. And... <laughs> like it's like it's a competition now. <laughs> it really was, yeah. One second. <clears throat> um, well, I can go on this you one know. on my own, Casey. Uh, because it is time for Frank Motion, the segment where I tell you what moves Frank Ocean has been making. Um, the last couple of weeks, not much at all. Uh, a week ago today, um, last Sunday on Easter Sunday, it would have been uh, night three of Coachella, and Frank Ocean was supposed to perform. He was supposed to end the entire end the entire festival. He was going to be the last one up there, and I and I thought for damn sure that that meant that he was going to uh, he was going to release release the album before, after, during. I don't know. I thought that that was going to happen. So, since Coachella was canceled, I thought to myself, self. 
What if he gives us the album anyways as like a consolation? Like, sorry guys, really wanted to perform for you. Here's here's the album that I pro that, that that not that I promised, but that you all expected for me to release. And go ahead and listen to this to 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 ease the pain of me not performing until October. So last Sunday I'm sitting around on Easter. I'm like any minute now, any minute now that thing's gonna drop here on Apple Music. I'm refreshing. I'm refreshing. Nothing, dude. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> of course, of course not. <laughs> it didn't happen. Um, there is still an unreleased single that's 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 going to be shipping out on those series of seven inches that I pre-ordered and still haven't received. But there's one more of a song that we haven't heard that that apparently is going to be shipping out this week or next week or something. So there's another song out there that we that that's brand new for us, and that's going to come one of these days. I'm I'm excited regardless. And, you know, maybe the reason it hasn't released, it hasn't come out yet is because it's the first single off the new album. So my theory this week is that's it. You know, the single ships out starting tomorrow. We get it by Friday and the album releases on Friday. Franco should come in this week. <laughs> or sorry. Um, um, uh, um, uh, let, why can't I think of it? What's the, what's the title? What, what do you mean? What do you, um, what do you mean? About, it's about, it's about, oh my God, how do I, I'm the biggest Frank Ocean fan ever, and yet I can't even think of what the the joke title of the new album is, is the the love one. Oh, that you get we're so in, we're, look at us, we're look in love. Look at us, we're in love. Why couldn't I think of that? Look yeah. at us, we're in love, dropping this Friday. Yeah, at least it's not, uh, not, when the pawn hits the conflicts, he <laughs> thinks like a king. What he knows throws the blows when he goes to the fight, and he'll win the whole thing for the before he enters the ring. There's no body to batter when your mind is your shit. What, let me let me keep going. When your mind is your might, so when you grow, when you go solo, you hold your own hand and remember that death is the greatest of heights. And if you know where you stand, <laughs> then you know where to land. And if you fall, then if you fall, it won't matter because you'll know that you're right. Frequently abridged to when the pawn. So Ran hold up, Fiona Apple. So hold up. Did this bitch take an entire verse and name her album after it? <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, she recorded the album stumped. first, and then she's like looking at it like, oh, what should I, what should I name this thing? And then she like is listening back, and that verse comes, and she's just like, yo, like this is it. This is what I'm naming the album. Oh, like uh, this one, <laughs> the, like this, this, these, these two, these two words within that. No, 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 no. the entire thing. <laughs> they're like, they're like, you could just name it "When the Pawn," and she's like, no, 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 no. no <laughs> you know no, what? It, no. You know what it reminds me of? You know those things that you read on Twitter and stuff? That's just like, use your use your uh, predictive text and just keep hitting the middle button and, until it gives you like whatever <laughs> what what you're gonna be when you grow up or something. It's like when I grow up, I want to be predictive text, predictive text, predictive text. That's what she did, dude. She was ahead of the she was ahead of the times. She was streets ahead in that sense that she just used predictive text to come up with what her album was gonna be called. <laughs> Yeah. Because it's whatever called. you just said to me, I didn't understand any of it. it didn't make any sense. <laughs> when, when the pawn. <laughs> Please don't read it again. <laughs> Please, <laughs> for the love of fuck, don't read it again. <laughs> it is literally, it is literally known as the longest fucking album title ever. I, I hope, I hope she sticks to that. I, I hope, I hope she keeps that title. I don't hope nobody takes it away from her. <laughs> it's, it's not going to be taken away from her. God, I'm damn. pretty sure. Um, for all oh, you 1975 like, fans the out there, thing, like the one thing I know about Fiona Apple, it's funny that. Uh, <laughs> funny I'm, that I'm glad you were right. I'm glad. I'm glad this all this all came together. Um, for any 1975 fans out there, we're also getting a new song this Thursday. If you're too shy, let me know. They played it live uh, like a month or so ago, so we all know the song, and it's it's the banger. It's it's the it's the jam, Casey. I'm excited. They've released okay. a lot of slower okay. acoustic songs I mean, I don't recently. Really listen no, 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 no. This this isn't for you. This is for this is for the folks, you know. <laughs> this is for the folks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but now, Casey, we're gonna start a new segment on the podcast this week: 2000s band of the week. And you had one written down, but when I went to do these notes, I realized it wasn't there anymore. Did you delete it? Well, I I, I was gonna like I I was gonna add it to like the conversation. That's why I had. Oh, it there. I thought I you thought deleted you, it off. I like like you you, like you, like you kept listening to them, and you're like, actually. Fuck this band. I'm taking this off. <laughs> no, 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 no. I noticed that you already had like a uh, a section there and I like at, I didn't realize that you had added it beforehand. Uh -huh. So I was just like I was just like, I'll just mention it when he uh, when he brings it up here. I don't wanna like I don't wanna have like this the thing and then you be like, Well, Casey, I noticed that you added something right here that is like <laughs> is literally on the same topic we already talked about, you fucking idiot. Um Yeah, that's why I deleted it off there. So your your band then was what? <laughs> 
my van was uh, the honorary title. A, a group that name. I don't think I ever really got into. Like, I can't name one song of theirs. I know I've listened to them, but I can't pinpoint anything to them. And, yeah, that uh, that's that album, Anything Else But The Truth, is like a really sappy album, but for some reason it's so fucking good. Mm -hmm. I don't know what makes it so fucking good, but uh, I, I don't know, man. They... they for what we were listening to back in the uh back in the day they had like a like a very uh a very mature kind of folkish sound yeah, and yeah. like I, that i can still get behind today which uh and like the album is really uh is really all over the place they have a lot of like uh different stuff but so like bright good. eyes in that sense where it was a band from that time but was just like making actual good music that we would listen yeah, to now and, and not just overly emo Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. and like some of it is overly emo, like Conor O'Burst can get, but it's still somehow super fucking good. Yeah, like you can you be, you can be like, emo, emotional, but also like do it well written. Like say it in a way, a smart, intelligent way and not something that's sappy and corny. Exactly, exactly. And like the way he sings and like their instrumentation, dude, it's like, I don't know how we found them when we were kids because mm -hmm. they literally sound nothing like. Probably whatever label they were signed on. Were they like Tooth and Nail or something? Were they a Christian band? I don't even know. I, I I'd have to look that up actually. Yeah, because I mean, because I feel like back then that, was, that's what a lot of it was. It was like whatever label a band was on, you would just go to that label's website and find out like what else they had. Yeah, and like yeah, and that's uh. I don't think they really got they didn't really like take off after that album because they tried to go like you know they were just a different band and they made they were making indie music where like mm -hmm. we were like nah um, it was kind of like, right. mid, like midtown you know so where, they like, were on they were on doghouse records alongside like all american rejects uh mansions megan dia um oh, that's say anything why. say anything was on doghouse dude that's where it was we listened that's to say why. anything we looked at the record label we looked we found out honorary title yeah weatherbox I, I, you I, me I, and everyone we know they were all on doghouse yeah okay okay and like that's why is because all those bands were just like they were just i think they were way, way more mainstream than fucking yeah. the honorary title was Damn, Doghouse, a good label that, though. But dude, yeah, spend some time with that record. It's it's actually pretty I will. fucking good. I'll, I'll go back and it's listen actually, to it. It's like one of those things where like, you know, his voice and like singing voice and everything was kind of uh it was just different too. And mm -hmm. it's uh it's good. It's good. Um, it's like it's, it reminds me of that Midtown record where like uh, I don't know. Like I I could get back it I could get into the honorary title record more and more back in the day, but it was just right. like a different sound, you know. Um, the band I picked out, an exact opposite of what you chose, um, Under Oath, because that band was the only heavy band I ever really got into. Like, I was never into, like, really, like, screamy bands, n nothing that was too heavy or angsty. Like, I just, like, that didn't vibe with me. I wanted things that were more, like, more tame, more, like, honorary title, like, an acoustic indie type of, type of group or, you know, but for some reason under oath always did it for me like define the great line was one of my favorite albums ever like i remember watching documentaries about the making of that album and just it's is heavy as shit the zero in the circle through it nope that's uh disintegrate or disambiguation disambiguation okay. yeah that was the album where once uh aaron gillespie left it was just up to like uh i think spencer was his name spencer um, he he took the lead on singing and screaming, and he did everything himself. There was no more Aaron Gillespie, which is also a fantastic album. That's the thing is like that band went through so many lineup changes that by the time Disambiguation was coming out, the band did not have the same members from when Under Oath was started. Like they were a completely no, like, different band, didn't, band. Band didn't have the same members when fucking like their first album released, and then their yeah, first they're only mainstream. chasing safety. Yeah, they're only chasing safety. I think was the album that like they were completely different from what like whatever album came up before they're only chasing safety that had like when the sun yeah. sleeps on it yeah because that uh because after that the the singer left to make maylene mm -hmm. Ooh, maylene dude that fucking i i actually like maylene more than i like uh under oath be honest nice. with you. um yeah something about under oath just like the the heaviness of that band mixed with like the emotion of the singing mixed with the screaming like completely did it for me to find the great line i think is still one of my favorite albums ever it yeah it's it's if you if you've never listened to listen to under oath or haven't in a while maybe maybe choose this week to to dial back into that band 
And also, Casey, we were, we were on the topic of uh, bringing back old uh, old things. And I watched uh, <laughs> I watched an older movie this week, one of my favorite movies of all time. So 2000s movie of the week, forgetting Sarah Marshall, dude. So good. So good. One of my favorite comedies of all time. Still holds up. Um, just as good as, like, you know, all the other movies that were coming out around that time. Pineapple Express, Super Bad, Knocked Up, 40 Year Virgin. Um, that's where the, 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 I got the, I got the whole, I was going to do that, uh, that, but then I just carried on living my life thing from, because, uh, because Russell Brand's character says that when, when, because it's Jonah Hill's character walks up to me, he's like, did you get a chance to listen to that mixed or that, uh, that demo that I gave you? And he's like, oh yeah, I was going to listen to it, but then I just carried on living my life. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, but it carried on living my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he's wearing when he's wearing that dumbass Hawaiian shirt that Sarah Marshall gives to him, and he accidentally spills wine on it, and he's just like, "Oh no, n- take my eyes, but not my shirt." <laughs> it's so good, dude. It, that, that movie holds up so well, and it's also one of those movies where like a lot of the movies from that time, like there's things that were like offensive then. They say some words that just like aren't okay now, and they they don't hold up as well. But this movie, super clean, dude. Like it's just there's nothing think, wrong with this uh, movie. I, it's just I think it kind of goes in line with like I don't know like the, the stuff that like you know, the, the people that made it and are like you don't really see a lot of that bullshit like mm-hmm. Jason so, uh, Siegel he like he kind of chooses his uh, his projects carefully and right. and um, and just like the people that were tied to it you know mm-hmm. like I don't know um, you can you can tell you can tell when you're gonna have a problem with that shit when like it's just by the people who make it you're like Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> oh boy! Here we go. Um, have you watched anything new this week, Casey? It's, it's, uh, since I'm sitting here talking about forgetting Sarah Marshall, did you watch anything new or old? Um, I I watched John Oliver, but that was probably yeah, about yeah. it. Um, I watched. Uh, Ooh, speaking of John Oliver, Megan and I started Community from the beginning since it's on Netflix now, and so good, so good. Is that? The fuck does that have to do with John Oliver? He's in it. Oh, yeah, he's he the uh, he's uh, what is he? He's I think he's just a professor there. Yeah, he's just a professor there. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with John <laughs> like, Oliver? Like, like, like Corey, your fucking why transitions are getting like, sloppy. In my brain, I was like, why do you keep trying to change the subject to you, Corey? <laughs> your transitions are getting real sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> like, you sound like me with your transitions, bro. <laughs> Oh yeah! Speaking uh, of garlic, I fucking took out the trash the other day. Uh, well, that's related because that's where garlic comes from. Anything can be a transition, actually. If you really think about yeah, it, you can yeah. transition anything into the next thing. It's it's just so easy, you know. Yeah, yeah. When the days yeah, start okay. to bleed together, the world starts to bleed together, and everything becomes the same thing. Trust me, everything, <laughs> everything's, everything's going a little fucking crazy. Um, I decided for some reason to watch the uh, two-part series finale of Modern Family. Uh, Corey's sh- this guy who hasn't watched any of any of the episodes of Modern Family ever, but he decides to watch. The no, no, no. So I watched the man. first like three, four seasons of Modern Family and used to love it, and then it just got ridiculous. Like the the kids all got older, and the storylines were bad, and the writing got worse, and it's just like I completely lost interest in that show. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna watch the series finale because I like to wait the, to see the way the, shows end. The dad is so fucking funny. Oh, he's so show. good. He's the best part it about that show. It literally doesn't like I can, I hate everybody else, but the dad is like. <laughs> <laughs> saving grace well the, so like, the, i literally the, hate out everybody else. the finale was like so unbelievable in a sense that i mean like it wasn't believable um it's on the same day it was like oh th- she's gonna go off to college she's gonna go live in this other place these two got a job here he's gonna go do this and they get they moved into an apartment everybody just like oh we're all like we're all leaving ironically on the same exact That's day <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like popular, like popular, or like, uh, like, um, like television shows and stuff that we watch. Like, some the endings and shit. Like, some of sometimes that shit is just so unfucking believable. Yeah. But like, like, what are the odds that everybody in the same exact day all had to go different places and we've been together for two, sure. ele- eleven years? But all of a sudden, it's like huh, we got to get going, guys, on the on the same day. And I know this is crazy, right? But yeah, yeah, it was just like, there was no twists, there was no emotion, it was just like, it was uh, awful. Unfortunately, like, like, you're not the majority of people. 
where most of you like, yeah, I think that worked on a lot of people. Everyone's <laughs> just like, oh my god, I'm looking at everyone leaving. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't look that up. I should go onto the Reddit page and see if everyone's just like, that's one of the most beautiful finales I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like when it's like when you watch the at the end of Game of Thrones and like every main character gets what they've wanted, the, what they've been striving for for the entire fucking book, and you're mm-hmm. like, the, the fuck, like what the what okay yeah like, just, just like, trying to please everyone it. rather than making something that's believable. yeah this is like like this is yeah this is like this is stupid mm-hmm. like especially in something like modern family where it's like supposed to be a re- like 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 a semi-realistic take of like you mm-hmm. know like a like a family like that shit doesn't happen like yeah. just give me some you know you can actually work around like a good scenario with something kind of realistic where you're mm-hmm. like you know not showing everyone some fucking <laughs> unrealistic <laughs> bullshit so that <laughs> making like <clears throat> making fucking inflated ideals about their fucking existence <laughs> um other than that uh, i've been watching silicon valley uh that's on it's i got it for free on hbo right now for some reason mm. apple tv was just like here watch all of silicon valley so i started that back up again so good i'm addicted so i love that fucking, fucking good, show right um what, how, how far are you through um so i i had watched season one previously but it had been so long that i decided to start over again and i finished season one so did I'm you get st- to the part where he's they're like they're sitting there and he's just like it's like how long do you think it would take to to like beat off everybody in the room oh yeah yeah, yeah. Like, it's one of the greatest like, scenes ever <laughs> They do the entire the, the entire math of how long it would take and that's you know, the yeah. the dick to floor ratio and everything. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, yeah and then amazing. fucking Richard Richard's like can't take he like he and like something like sparks of thought inside of him and he like flocks himself in his room uh-huh. while they're all talking and about they, they, like, like they break the door down but he can't even hear him because he's got his headphones yeah. on. <laughs> they're like, Where'd Richard go? Like what the fucking <laughs> Yeah, Dude, it's that, incredible. That, that, sh- that fucking show, I have still haven't seen the last season, man. I need to watch that shit. It's yeah. so fucking... I'm going to try to get through it as fast as I can. And it, honestly, if, if if Apple TV takes it away, for, I'm just going to sign up for HBO Go like, long enough to finish it. Because I, I got I to gotta see this through. So, But there's also a and new I, show. What? I was going to say, I, I, I just last, last season of Silicon Valley was so fucking good that I'm just like, I'm, I'm almost like weary to watch uh yeah you, you don't want like this, the yeah. last season to be bad and then like uh, you'd rather like just leave it when it was amazing <laughs> yeah because it could have ended literally it could have ended off the season that i watched mm-hmm. but like i think they still had a little bit more to say but honestly yeah, yeah. like if i never watch it and i just end it with that season and so fucking be it that then, then i'll watch it before season. you and i'll let you know <laughs> i'll let you know okay. if it's worth watching or not okay 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 <clears throat> And aside from that, um, there's a show called Bruise Brothers that's uh, from a co-creator of The League. And it's fucking really dumb, but I watched the whole thing in like 24 hours. It's one of those shows that's just so stupid. But like, I don't know, it takes place in a brewery. And like, I like breweries and craft beer and stuff. So it's like, it's just, you know, one of those shows that's just trying to be slapstick funny, just like The League. And it's like, it pulls it off. It's not the greatest show I've ever seen. It's not, it's probably not even like a really good show. It's just... It was entertaining enough, and it did the, it did the job, I guess. Um, is there any is there any shitty shows that you've ever just liked but known were bad? Um, <laughs> people, uh, Corey, why do you gotta put put me down these roads? Because like people people think like they're gonna they they look this stuff up and they judge me based on this. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> but there is this there is this. Stupid Are you about to name a show, show that everybody likes but you fucking hate? No, 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 no. Oh. I'm about to name a show that no one probably knows, and if okay. they look it up, they're gonna they're gonna be like, Casey. I thought I had, I literally I thought more of you, bud. Um, <laughs> there's a show on Netflix that I, I had one time come downstairs, and my sister was watching it like years ago. But I'm it's so- called Blue. It's called Blue Mountain State, and it's about <laughs> like it's about football, like literally frat football. Oh, I, I know the show. It was on. It was on Spike TV, I believe, the broiest like, of all channels. Like, it, is, it is the dumbest fucking shit. But I sat there and I fucking watched it, and I loved it for some reason, yeah. dude. No, it's and exactly like, the same as this show. It's just so fucking dumb, but for some reason, it's like. This is funny because of how stupid it is. Like literally, like it is the dumbest shit. And like, and like, I at first, like, I sat down and I start. I was, I was like, looked at my sister and I was like, 
how the fuck are you watching this shit? And then three episodes in, I was like, who is this? Who is that? Like, I'm like, what's going on? Like, and I was just like laughing at it too. And just like, I was in it, dude. I was in it. And it was just dumb as shit. I lost brain cells because of that shit. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know exactly yeah, the show, yeah. and I and I know the type of people that I know that really love that show, and, and you are opposite to them. <laughs> I'm completely opposite. I've talked to people that love that show. They're like, people have came up to me, and like, you, you want to know how I how I knew, like, I did not want to watch this show, because people come up to me and they like, yo, bro, you ever seen the, you ever seen the show Blue Mountain State? And be like, yeah, I have. Unfortunately, Unfortunately I, have. I fucking love that. Unfortunately, show. I have. He's wearing like a tap out shirt. He's his monster <laughs> hat. He's like, dude, that show is so. You ever, you know that, you know the like the fucking character Thad Castle. Oh, dude, that guy's fucking awesome. Like, like so, like, pre pre previous to watching that show, if I had told you, Casey, you were gonna fall in love with a show with a main character named Thad Castle, you'd tell me to fuck right off. <laughs> I would tell you to fuck right off, and then. I, and then even as I watched the first, like, two episodes of the show, I'd be like, Corey, you are a fucking idiot, dude. You are an asshole. And then literally about five episodes in, I'd be like, Corey, I don't know what happened, bud, but I am in love with this shit. <laughs> um, well, Casey, Parasite's on Hulu right now, so maybe do yourself a favor and watch that to cleanse your yeah. palate. <laughs> a little bit more fucking culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, watch Parasite on Hulu, everybody. If you've ever watched yeah. Blue Mountain State, and, do us all a favor and, and watch if, yeah. Parasite. <laughs> and if you don't know what Blue Mountain State is, please don't look it up, because you're yeah, going to yeah. judge me in ways that you don't, you know, you don't know is possible. <laughs> I don't know why I like it. Don't ask me why I like it. It's one of those um, things where, yeah, like, Casey's, you know, Casey's going to get canceled. Casey's canceled, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was like when you're like, you start listening to like Backstreet Boys or like, uh, or like fucking one of those boy bands and you start grooving to it and you're, yeah, like, you're like, I don't know why I fucking, why I like this, but I'm fucking grooving to it, man. <laughs> Tell me why. I shouldn't I shouldn't be liking this, but I'm fucking loving it. Uh. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. In sync. Both of them. Both of them. Both All of them. them. Um 98 degrees. Throw those in there. Let's talk let's talk some video games, Casey. Um which before I get into any video games, um I I, I was I, I I constantly scroll through PlayStation profiles and people are online and seeing like what they played recently, their trophies and stuff. I saw you playing Monopoly on the PlayStation 4. What's up with yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Am I yeah. missing out on something? Um um <laughs> I mean <laughs> if you want to join a fucking match of of uh five people all screaming at each other then, yeah you're really missing out <laughs> so on it's, it's 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 online like you guys play online yeah yeah we play online it was uh it was steve woodard uh and a couple other buddies yeah and, and we played online we played just you know good old-fashioned <laughs> monopoly. monopoly i mean yeah. during during this pandemic during these times of lockdown and quarantine what better thing to do than gather around with your buddies and play a playstation 4 version of monopoly you lose a lot of friends playing Monopoly. <laughs> was there was there ever a victor, or did it was everyone just quit out? Oh no, there was victors. There was victors, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you win? Oh no, no. Oh. I got I got I get like third or second, or I never yeah, yeah. I never won. You uh, third was usually my. You play anything else this week? It's just Modern Warfare. That Warzone. I'm playing Modern. I'm playing Modern Warfare. Did I you get the season the pass? I picked up the actual game. Oh, you did. So you're playing like? Are, are you playing like the, uh, like all the other, like, all the other modes, like, like ground, the two on two? Like and... more. <laughs> fuck, fuck that two on two. Did you whoever try? Likes that, whoever likes that two on two, you're the you're the problem we have in this world. Did you did you try <laughs> the uh, like that whatever the realistic mode is? Where like all the Real, realism mode is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's. I tried realism ground war. They had like uh, ground war is like the big ass fucking like battlefield esque. Uh, mm -hmm like game types but um yeah no, that's yeah, cool the, the realism mode is always like strike me like i i always wanted to check that out like the yeah, way that all was, the maps are off being able to like have to having to listen to the sounds it's it's very uh rainbow cg it's, right it's just like yeah it's just like hardcore like they have hardcore but like the difference between realism is like um in hardcore it gives you the indication when you kill people and shit mm -hmm. like and like when you have your uh 
when you have your kill streaks, but in realism, it doesn't give you any of that shit. So if mm-hmm. you like shoot a guy and kill him, then mm-hmm. you don't know if you kill him or yeah, it's pretty cool. the The one thing that's the one thing that's shitty about hardcore is that yeah, it's like Rainbow Six. So uh, you'll get into a game with twelve people, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the quietest shit in the fucking world because everybody's creeping around. Mm-hmm. Like it is literally like you won't hear yeah, a gunshot. I love that. I love that idea. Or won't hear anything. <laughs> Usually in in Call of Duty, you're hearing fucking explosions and fucking gunshots. Fucking people die in every other second, but mm. you don't hear any. You don't hear anything, and it's like being in a fucking horror movie. Hmm. And you're just like, I wonder where that. Wonder where people out oh, there he is. He's right. <laughs> he's right fucking behind me. Yeah, no, that excites me. Like, I've I've always wanted to try that mode. Like, in uh... and and I I'll, I'll give you I'll I'll give you it's like if there's one thing that they did they did right about uh with this one it feels like you know like I get shot in the back every now and then due to due to bad spawns, but mm-hmm. it seemed like that was the one thing that really pissed me off about a lot of uh, Call of Duties is that uh you know I'd be I'd be um. I'd be try to post up in a house or like actually try to do something and then all of a sudden they start spawning the enemies behind us and they right. just run up and fucking kill us and I was like what the fuck is the <laughs> fucking what the fuck is the point of this shit <laughs> but it's just like they they cycle the uh the spawns well enough so like I can actually like you know take defense in a place or like post up in a place and not or or even like spawn and try to run down a road and not have like an enemy behind me Mm-hmm. Over it. and just like thank thank you thank thank you activision infinity ward it's like i didn't mind your games until um, i started getting shot in the fucking back <laughs> uh for me uh animal crossing obviously playing the hell out of that still i'm over 100 hours in that game now um just uh I, I've, I've beaten it i think I've, we said that in the last podcast but yeah the game the game's beaten now i'm just terraforming the hell out of it make i've got i've got a i've got a basketball court i've got a soccer soccer field um i got like a little town square i've got this whole museum set up it's it's coming along nicely i'm feeling real good about it um and aside from that final fantasy 7 remake i've been going going hard on that game i think i'm about 15 to 20 hours in that game right now more than halfway done um, I, and yeah, I, I just uh, I just watched uh, the this guy that uh, streams it. He just finished it up. Nice. Um, yeah. I love it, dude. And that's the thing is like I'm not into the fantasy genre. You know that. Everybody knows that. Um, like there's dragons and shit in that game, but like few and far between. It's I think it's more so like you know the cyberpunkness of it all, like the the fucking vehicles and the big like machinery and stuff. Where <laughs> it's not so much fantasy in in that sense of you know God or um. Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings, it's it's a lot more, you know, just sci-fi almost, and that that's, that's why I, that's why I can get into it, and I'm you know, I really love it. I love all the characters. I love the story. I'm not skipping any of the cutscenes. I'm very much heavily invested in this game, like more so than I thought I would be. It's like I'm sitting here playing it, thinking to myself, like, is this one of the greatest games I've ever played? Like, it's it's that good. It's really really Cloud's good. Cloud's just way too much of a of like a, of a ladies' man, dude everybody wants him and the thing like you know that's, I mean? that's the point of the game I think too maybe i think even all the dudes want him too every female he talks to wants him hard and he wants nothing to do with any of them he's so like he's so just it, coy he's so just you know turn offish like he just like, like or standoffish and like, I, that's the one thing like and like and, and like i i like i love the the experience of the game too but that was the one thing i kept coming back to is just like man this really takes me out of the experience like can can one girl just have her fucking just not like him and that but like, so the th- what i'm realizing is happening in the game is like you're having to make these choices as you go along of like how you're responding to things that they say and things that they do I, you're ultimately picking one of them. Like all these girls are after you, and I, you're essentially yeah, just deciding just... which one you want to go with, and you're gonna have it's to just... choose one. And I, at this point, like I keep going back and forth. I'm just like, I love all you ladies. Like I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That's it's just like such like a uh, like a young boy type thing to mm-hmm. like have like people pick which I don't know. I I I'm, think I'm team two. It's like. Yeah, see, and that's what I'm talking about. It's like I'm not watching a fucking Twilight movie. <laughs> I wanted, I want to read. If I'm, if I'm like, if I'm gonna experience a story, like 
It's can it be deeper than something Twilight where I'm not like Team Tifa, Team yeah, Aerith. Dude. Every I'm girl's like, horny for him in this game. Every single one of Jesus. them. Jesus. <laughs> and that's like and like every time like I would try to get into like the deeper parts of the story, like that's the thing that would be like emphasized was uh -huh. that like like and I'd be like I don't fucking care. Yeah. I don't fucking I, care. I'm very, I'm very, I'm heavily invested in the story. Maybe, so like, maybe it's I don't even care. I'm like not... I'm, I'm ready to see <laughs> who, who he picks, what happens. Like, give it to me. Maybe it's because I'm just not a coy ladies man. So it's yeah. just like, like I, I know, see, so I see Tifa getting carried away, me. getting carried away in this carriage, uh, um, with a chocobo in front of her. I'm like, Oh no. Like, <laughs> what's, what's happening to Tifa? Like, don't, don't fuck with my Tifa. Like, what's, and at that point, I thought, I thought I was maybe, maybe going Aerith's way. I thought I was starting to like her a little bit. But once I saw Tifa getting taken away, my heart sank, dude. I was like, no, that's my yeah, main yeah. bitch. Like, don't take exactly, her away from me. Exactly. Like, that's how, that's how I felt when I was like super young. Like, uh -huh. I, so like, I, I, I wish, I, I wish I was experienced, like, experiencing a Final Fantasy for the first time so I could be like, uh, yeah. I'd be a uh, return to that uh, that that <laughs> that boyish childish self. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, which, absolutely which, in love with the game. I'm Team Aerith all fucking day. Aerith, but, uh, if okay. We to, if we had to talk about it, but okay. Uh, yeah, Me Me Megan likes her dress. Uh, she, I think that's, I think that's her choice too. But I don't know, man. Like, uh, she's been sitting there like doing like embroidery and stuff, sitting mm -hmm. next to me. So like, she'll randomly mm -hmm. turn to me and be like. So who are you leaning towards? <laughs> are you actually paying attention to this? <laughs> I mean, Tifa's Tifa's got some gigantic knockers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's 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 one fucking that's a one upside. So you really you really want to get canceled in this episode, don't you, Casey? <laughs> <laughs> if it's not Blue Mountain State, it's 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 saying that a female has gigantic knockers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, man. Like that's the one thing is just like whole. Shit. Like, I knew you had an entire other person to you, but you're carrying around a fucking entire other person on that chest. You're <clears throat> um, anyways, a couple that's big... Just like Jap <laughs> that's just Japanese artwork. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like... that's, that's the anime <laughs> side of it. Yeah. It was um, like, oh, dude, like, I'm Team Tifa, too, but Jesus, does she have to look so fucking anime? <laughs> like, my goodness. <laughs> um, first up, uh, a couple big news stories to discuss as far as games are concerned. Um, Jason Schreier of Kotaku, who was actually leaving Kotaku, so this is one of his last reports there, reported that Grand Theft Auto 6 is in fact in development, obviously, <clears throat> but that it's very early on, and when the game does in fact release, it may release as a moderate-sized release, rather than a full-fledged title, um, and then they're going to expand on it with regular updates over time, um, and do, to do one of two things, A, get the game out quicker, and B, to help relieve the stress and crunch that Rockstar is known for. Um, Jason reported previously that those working for Rockstar would often work 60 to 100 hour weeks while working on Red Dead 2, which is fucked up and bad, obviously. Um, apparently they've made great strides since then. The right people are in the right places and they're making sure their workers aren't being overworked. Overtime is now op um, optional, which they used to be mandatory. You used to be mandatory to work overtime. You had to work those 60 to 100 hour weeks or else you'd be fired. And according to this, due to the contact that he, he was talking to, it's a much better place to work there now people are happier and and that's that's most important so it may be a while until we get gta and it may roll out in phases where we're gonna i think maybe like we'd get the same thing that we get with gta online and red dead online where the game would release with like a limited amount of things or places to go and limited amount of story and they'd expand on the story and maybe episodes as it goes on what do you think how do you how do you feel about that well i think that's dumb as shit <laughs> um. <laughs> I think that's fucking stupid as fuck, but hey, bud, that's just me. Um, didn't like their like their like lead uh, lead just leave? Yeah, like, uh, one 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 Houser. of the one of the brothers that that was one of the founders of a uh, rock star. One yeah, of out. the brothers just left. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, uh, GTA Six <laughs> is gonna be a pile of shit, dude. I'm calling it now. Uh, I, I mean, I'm hopeful because it's still Rockstar, regardless of like a, if a, if a lead left. It's, it's gonna, still like you've got you've got a team there that's been working on these games like, for years. It's and gonna years. feel like fucking. It's gonna feel like fucking Saints Row. This is this is the epitome of of what we talked what we talked about earlier of the the positive and the negative and trying to balance each other out. <laughs> Casey's like, this is fucking garbage. It's gonna be terrible, and I'm like, I think it'll be pretty good. I, I'm excited about this. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if they have they have a lot to they have a. Lot stand on with the old gta's but... yeah yeah i mean if we just got a giant like 
area in town to mess around with and we got GTA online and there's things to do but the story was like just like we're gonna do it in episodes we're gonna make this a slow burning thing we're like every few months we're gonna do the next part of the story the next part of the story I'm fine with that because I never really played the story run my head into a wall like I'll, I I'll, all I story. all I want is the area to fuck around in I just want the area to play online and get my get my house and, and just live live my GTA life you know so I'm okay with this as long as I get the area which I will so but you want the story which is why we disagree yeah because there's something about there's something about the gta online that like after a while playing it like i realized that just earning virtual money yeah i'm like i'm like turning off myself in a world where i earn real money yeah i mean go and earn virtual money to buy virtual it's literally like <clears throat> i'm literally going into like i don't think that's i don't think i'd be really like i'd be uh like uh a good candidate for like VR simulation because I'd be like, yeah, but you're talking to the guy that's got over a hundred hours into animal crossing where I'm just <laughs> making bells to give to Tom Nook to pay off the rent on my house. So I, so I can use, you know, use the other money to buy basketball hoops and arcade machines and they don't exist. I don't have them in my house, but I have them in my animal crossing house. And that's all that matters. To you. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Something, something about like that. I was just like, I love it, and I love getting on there and playing. Mm -hmm. But like, even Red Dead did the same thing, where I was just like, I was just like, I'm literally, I'm living this life where I go to work at Dunkin' to earn a to earn a living, <laughs> and I come back here and I load into a Western world and do the same exact thing. Yeah. I was just like, I'd rather die. Yeah. I'd and rather the, well, the die. whole thing with uh, the reason why Red Dead never clicked with me is, I mean, it did click with me. Like that game is fantastic, and I love roaming around that world. But I'm not, a, I'm just not a Western guy. It's not a genre I care about. So like, as much as like the graphics are amazing and the amount of things to do and the size of the world and how cool everything is in that game, I, I, I can't fully envelop myself in a Western world because that's just not my style. Yeah, yeah, I still yeah, love yeah, that no, game. No, it was my game of the year that year. It's amazing game. It's just a genre that I just, don't just a, totally. It's the same way with I with the, that I feel with like looter looter shooters. Now it's like right. we've gotten to the point where we've made, we've made so so many games where we've experienced the uh, the idea so many times that it just needs to be innovated and it needs to be pushed forward. Like right. I can't play GTA Online again. Like I can't do it. Right. I can't do it with upgraded graphics. <laughs> like. I'm gonna. I will literally bash my head off a of fucking <clears throat> off my desk. Here's like, the deal. Here's the deal, Casey. You're gonna. <laughs> yeah. Because if that's, cause that's it, we're all gonna like, do it. We're all gonna fucking do it. And I'm and I'm and I'm sorry, but I will play GTA Online if it's the same exact thing. I will play it for like maybe five months or like four months, and uh -huh. I'll be over with it. And because that's because honestly, man, if it ha if it has no innovation, it'll just be like a looter right. shooter where. Like mm -hmm. Borderlands, where I buy Borderlands, I play through half of it. I don't play any more of it because it's same. boring. Did the it's same boring. exact thing. You're just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Like there's nothing boring. to just mix up the gameplay and get you doing something else. You're just shooting, grabbing a bunch of stuff, moving on to the next area. Shooting, grabbing a bunch of stuff, moving on to the next area. Like it's there's there's just it's not beefy enough. Like I love I love the art style. Like I I I like the whole aesthetic of Borderlands, but it's just I don't know. It's just not it's enough just... to keep me interested. Yeah, it's just and it's and it was just like maybe from one to two there was like like there was still that uh that uh sprinkle of like newness on like mm -hmm. to the game, but like with the third one, like like nah dude. And especially how long GTA online has been out and then we got Red Dead Online, which is like pretty much the same exact thing. Like if you don't innovate the fucking thing and just give it to us then we're gonna I I know people are gonna fucking eat it right up because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what people fucking do. But me, me, I am people. <laughs> I, but me, I'll get called an idiot for not fucking playing it. Everyone's entitled to their own, their own opinions. I'll stand by you. Maybe not and agree then, with you, but I'll stand and by then you. Five years later, they'll be like, be like, man, GTA's not even really that. <laughs> like GTA Six wasn't even really that good. We want GTA Seven. <laughs> Um, next up, Casey, the PS5 controller is finally revealed, and we have we haven't talked about it yet. Uh, it was it was a couple weeks ago. It's a it's a two tone controller. It's got it's it's white and black rather than just like an all black controller that we're used to that we're used to getting. 
Um, a few new features, you know, the the rumble in the in the triggers, the rumble in the in the actual thing itself. Um, a microphone built into it. Uh, if you want to read about it, you can go to the PlayStation blog. It's got all the info there. What do you what do you what do you think about it? Do you do you like the the style? I do. I like the look of it. I like the look of it. I'm I'm, I'm not gonna really know what. I'm not gonna really know the. Uh know how i really feel about it until i hold it in, exactly. into my hand and you hold it in my hands though but it, i mean it. i like that it looks like futuristic it looks like a, a controller of the future like they're they're moving forward they're not sticking to the same dual shock they had before they even changed the name it's the dual sense now um but my, my biggest thing with it is like so we're always used to like a single color box because it would be the dual shock five right like yeah. five senses yep oh nice okay sick yeah, yeah, didn't put that That's one good, together. Good analogy, did you? Casey. Good analogy. Um, <laughs> didn't no. put that one together, did you? So my man? biggest question is like, you know, we had the PlayStation One, gray controller, gray box. We had the PlayStation Two, black controller, black box. We had the PlayStation Three, black controller, black box. PlayStation Four, black controller, black box. Here we are with a PlayStation Five with a mostly white with accents of black controller. Do you think the system itself will follow that same color scheme? Like, do you think we're gonna have like an, a kind of white system, or do you think it's gonna be all black? Honestly, I saw a mock-up of the uh, of the new controller, all black, and it looks so much better. Yeah, so I, I I honestly want just all black. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. Like, I think because it's white, like they're gonna follow that scheme. I think we're gonna have like a a white. Like, it's weird because Xbox and PS4 or and PlayStation have just flip flopped. Where it used to be like Xbox had like the like the Xbox One white controller, white console with black accents. Now the Xbox One Series X that's coming out is a black controller with an all black box, and now PlayStation's adapting the white stuff. So it's like they're flip flopping completely. But I think we're gonna get some white in that console, Casey. Yeah, I think I think PlayStation might be going the other way with it because they're like, you don't want an Xbox? If you want to fucking copy us, and fuck off, bud. <laughs> Let's go the other way with it. Fuck yeah. you. Um, and, and, then, and then fucking the PS5 just red rings. It's just like whatever, whatever. <laughs> they really, they really flip flopped. They just stole from yeah, each yeah. other. If you if you put your system in a, in a white box, it just red. You just get like have problems with it. <laughs> Where the like, Xbox Series like X is just one giant fan anyway. That thing's never gonna red ring. It's yeah. it's got all the air it needs. It is like that's the tab. The tab it becomes taboo in the uh, gaming world. It's like <laughs> you know by you know by white boxed. Uh, White box consoles. <laughs> um, White case consoles. Next up, we got some quick Resident Evil 8 rumors that excited you, KC. Uh, once again, apparently it might be coming in 2021 and will make a return to the first person perspective and feature the same protagonist as Seven. So, how excited are you if that's true? Fucking, I'm so fucking excited. It's what you want. You know, first you know, person. I. I I love I love the people like I was watching a stream of uh, of Resident Evil Three, but I love the people that are like playing through and they're like, "Yeah, this game's not bad. It's like, it's like mainly like a seven. Like you know, it's like you know, it's, it's not bad. Like, dude, yeah, because you fucking played it before, you fucking <laughs> moron. It's literally the same exact fucking game that you fucking played. Like Jesus, like why, like you're reviewing a game you've already fucking played before, you fucking idiot. <laughs> fucking idiots and like we literally <laughs> uh, like we're <laughs> we're the type of people that will literally play a remake of a fucking game and be like yeah we fucking love it like, uh, <laughs> especially like and like final fantasy 7 remake is a completely different thing but like yeah resident resident evil 3 is literally like pretty much the same exact game with just enhanced graphics and everyone's just like fucking seven out of eight yeah dude because it's literally the exact same fucking game so on that same Wait. note then we it, there's the another the next rumor going around is in 2022 resident evil 4 is going to get the remake treatment yeah, how do yeah. you feel about that then <laughs> what do you think i feel about that <laughs> use your resources to do anything else <laughs> yeah like, see please. the only reason like i haven't cared about resident evil 2 resident evil 3 remake didn't care about any of them like i'm, I'm not huge in, a, in, in the horror games i'm not huge into resident evil like i don't really care resident evil 4 is the one game that people say in the resident evil series i've heard people say it's their favorite of the series it's their favorite game of all time i hear a lot about resident evil 4 this one only intrigues intrigues me for that reason i've never played it before so like if i'm gonna play it might as well play this version of it so i'm just gonna wait and i'll probably buy this one because of all the hype surrounding it the more, the more I think about Resident Evil 4, the more, like, I think about the story and, like, it's kind of dumb as shit. <laughs> Isn't there not zombies in it or something? Yeah, like, yeah, there's, like, a new breed of zombies. But, like, the main story and, like, 
and like this is like i have to like i start thinking about like how like what really is popular when it comes to stories because like resident evil 4 could like considered one of the best resident evil games he's like he goes to a different country to save the president's daughter <laughs> literally that's the story <laughs> and like he's just trying to save the president's daughter the entire time <laughs> so do you think they're gonna like really modernize it and make it about i fucking trump <laughs> yeah jesus and like that's like but that's like that's like something like i think back on it now and i'm like what the fuck what the why was i so fucking into this stupid fucking <laughs> game well, in two years, uh, I'll be the judge you go, of that. <laughs> you, go, you go to a, like a random fucking infect, infested town or infected town to find the president's daughter. Why she's there, I for, totally fucking forgot because the game is dumb as shit. I mean, is there is there a love story? Is is he attracted to this daughter or is it more of like a... Thank, thank God he's not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank God he's not, dude, because probably... Jesus, she a little honey like, or what? <laughs> it's a lot of the things I look back on is just like, uh, like I don't know. Like, it's like ever since I played Death Stranding, it's like it's been one of those things where it's like, oh, people thought Death Stranding was good. Now, like, what other things do people think that are good that were really fucking? <laughs> Start a list. Start a li yeah. every week. We're gonna talk about things that people, the general public, thinks is good that Casey thinks is total trash. It's, it's a new segment starting next week. <laughs> literally total trash. Um, that's like I, I don't know I, th I think the same thing's gonna happen where like it even it even might suffer even worse because like they'll be like you know this resident evil 4 wasn't as good as the last one like yeah. hopefully it will hopefully it will spark that thing where it was like it was like maybe we don't need to remake games because yeah, yeah. resident evil 4 was great like yeah we don't need to remake games yeah. and eventually we're gonna get to a point more. where all of those games have been remade and it's like no one's gonna remake the games of like this generation because they're so polished and look good already so we're eventually we're gonna run out of things to remake i think i but... fucking hope so. <laughs> hope so and then we'll actually have to make like you know new fucking apps yeah like new um, ips speaking of remakes though and speaking or this, this is the last segment of the of the podcast some new release dates um spongebob squarepants battle for bikini bottom rehydrated will be releasing on ps4 xbox one and nintendo switch on june 23rd i actually am excited about that because i love spongebob and it's just like you know it's a 3d 3d exploration uh like spyro -y type game and I'm, I'm down with it um star wars episode one yeah. racer will be released on playstation 4 and nintendo switch on may 12th that's not a remaster that's just the same ass game with like some upgraded graphics it's the it's the star wars episode one pod racing game casey <sighs> <laughs> and crisis is making a comeback with a remastered version Jesus. for xbox one ps4 and nintendo switch at some point this year no actual release date has been given but crisis is coming back casey that's three remakes right in a row i want to die and not a remake but a sequel to to, to, to some old games streets of rage 4 is coming to ps4 okay. xbox one and nintendo switch on april 30th we're very close to that one that's 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 gonna be good that's gonna be good if it's there's online i say we get that and like we stream and play that game i'm just you know i'm i'm hoping that once we release the new playstation playstation 5, 5 and xbox series x that uh we get out of this like very blanketed fucking uh era we've been in of just remastering and remaking games for the ps like the ps4 and the xbox uh the xbox one are just like really uh really really glorified remastering systems oh for sure and like that's that's it's like just i think it's just because like it's easy to do like the story is there the like everything about the game the assets are all there it's just like let's upscale the graphics is you going to assign a smaller team to it the main studio that created that game doesn't have to do it themselves they can assign a different team to do it and it's just doesn't take a lot of money to make it happen but they can make a ton of money in return yeah and like and like that's like like if I want to remake, I want something like Final Fantasy VII, which like it took them like, what ten years oh, to do. Jesus, yeah. Um, but like that's like, but I understand what you're saying with something like Resident Evil, where like we're like 
when their main team is working on Resident Evil 8, mm -hmm. you'll have your your young team remastering yeah. the old game so you can make money off of that because dumbass people will buy fucking Resident Evil 3 <laughs> and they'll be like, why is Nemesis playing the same exact way as he did in the old one? Because it's the same fucking game, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Uh, let's wrap this show up by taking a little sneak peek at some of the new releases that are coming out this week and we'll be talking about I thought next I was going to be exploring through a free roam raccoon city and Nemesis was going to be scaling the buildings and jumping down on from like no he wasn't Casey tomorrow's 420 Thank, thank, it, the fuck, thank the fuck. Thank the fucking lord. Um, on Netflix on 420, we're getting cooked with cannabis. Um, we're also getting the Midnight Gospel, which I wanted to read the description of this. It's mid the Midnight Gospel is a new eight episode adult animated series that comes from comedian Duncan Trussell and Adventure Times Pedalton Ward. Very loosely adapted from Trussell's podcast, the series follows a podcaster who sets out to interview beings living in dying worlds. Um, it's gonna be trippy as hell. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, Duncan Trussell's fun. He did, doesn't he do um fucking or doesn't he do like an episode? Doesn't he do the drunk histories? Um, I think so. Yeah, or he does an episode of one of with one of them. I yeah, guess where he's like he's like one of the uh, like one of like the makers of it. Um, hold on, I need to put a face to him. One second, Duncan Trussell. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does a lot of episodes. It's, he's not like the the main guy that 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 name is escaping me also, but he's very much involved in that show. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's loosely based on his podcast, and it's from the the, the art style of Avenge Adventure Time. So I'm excited to watch that tomorrow. Um, okay. okay. Tuesday, where, middle middle ditch and where's Schwartz. that on Netflix? Netflix, yes. Um, Middle Ditch and Schwartz is on Tuesday. The description for that one. For several years, Thomas Middle Ditch, Silicon Valley, and Ben Schwartz, House of Lives, have, or, and also Parks and Recreation, have been performing two-man long-form improv together on stage in Los Angeles and on tour. Three of the recent New York performances uh, were filmed for Netflix with all three completely improvised shows, one about a job interview, another about first-year law students, and a third at a wedding start streaming today. So it's like three separate improv of them performing in New York City. Uh, Netflix. I'm excited about that too. Okay. Um, okay. Thurs both Thursday. On Netflix, both on Netflix. We yep. have to check them out. Thursday I is won't the. Check them out, but I'll have to check them out. <laughs> I'll tell you guys about it next week. I'll have to check out. I'll have to check out Parasite though. That's one yeah, I will yeah. be checking. Um, yeah. Thursday, uh, the 2020 NFL draft, um, it's being done via zoom because nobody can be together for it. And they're going to be just completely doing it digitally, I guess. Um, Friday, the beastie boys story on Apple TV plus, which is directed by spike Jones. I'm excited for that. And also on Friday, predator hunting grounds is released. And if all goes according to plan, Casey and I will both be getting it and we'll do some sort of, some sort of stream and we can, we can play that game for the first time, uh, alive with all of you. So Stay tuned for it that. Be a blast. Um, I'm excited. We both love the Friday the Thirteenth game. Um, so this is made from the, the those same dudes. So it should be in that in that same realm. And I don't know what to expect because I would we, neither of us played the beta, and we're just gonna jump right in and hope for the best. I watched uh, I watched some um, some videos on it. It it's looked awesome, but it looked really like like. When you got into the shit, the frame rate dropped and it got really choppy. So hopefully mm. they that, yeah, but maybe maybe just being a beta, like it doesn't have the final patches and stuff on it yet. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, fucking Friday the Thirteenth had his fucking problems in the oh, beginning, yeah. but <laughs> you couldn't even play it for the first like three days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You purchased a game that you literally could not play. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. All right. I As remember, always, I remember. I remember. It was like two years after you guys got out of Halloween that one time. Oh yeah, it was, no, it wasn't. Point. It wasn't Halloween. It was actual Friday the Thirteenth in the month of October. Connor and I were like, "This is perfect timing." Both of our both of our significant others were 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 away that week or that night. They both had to work or something. So we were like, "Dude, it's it was boys' night." We called it boys' night, and Connor, Connor and I were so excited. Friday the Thirteenth, we're just gonna play it for hours, and we couldn't play. It was it just crashed the entire time. Yeah. It crashed the entire time so even like like two years afterwards the fucking game is gonna <laughs> Um, as always, if you enjoyed listening to us banter back and forth, please consider subscribing, supporting us on Patreon, and following us on social media. Head on over to www.rosemary.media for the links to do all of those things. Casey, any last words? When the pawn hits the <laughs> conflict...
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to read the entire thing, but I'm a little fucking... <laughs> You'd rather Never listen yet. to corn, right? <laughs> Stumble over it. Yeah, I would rather. I would rather listen to. Um, <laughs> but no, no, that's. Uh, I don't have anything else. You know, watch small soldiers. OG, listen OG, to corn. Oh, all day. I'll OG all day, dude. Small soldiers, OG. corn. You, you know, you cry yourself to sleep. You know the drill, boys. Cry, cry, cry yourself to sleep. Cry yourself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. Cry yourself to sleep. Cry yourself to sleep. Cry yourself to sleep.